whole talk today is about basically broadening our minds to get us to think about what we can and can't do, which is we can't do literally nothing. You, everything is art, the world is your oyster, and it should be inspirational that you find these people. You are in front of you today, you are success stories, so to speak. You have venture into new horizons in that they don't have people who uh, in their families who follow the same things. So maybe they do, but the whole idea is that they've taken upon themselves to push themselves or venture into new adventures. And that hasn't been an easy journey, and you will hear about each journey today. And there are trials and tribulations in each journey. There are difficulties, there are amazing achievements and amazing and happy moments too. But these success stories need to be heard by everyone. Because I think as a population, as people, we are like explorers in my humble opinion. We have you know, we ventured into different countries. I mean, more Albanians live outside of Albania than they do inside, right? So it shows that we are explorers, and we, we adapt to new cultures, we adapt to new economies, we adapt to new stresses. The one thing I think you see lack is sort of a community feel of like pushing each other to like, oh, progress further. You know, I think especially the first generation immigrants, the people who left the first, you know, first wave, the first you know, want to need was to find a job, settle, lay some foundations, perhaps create families, etc. For now, the generations that are coming through, I think it's incredibly important that we push everybody to say, well, yeah, you can follow those traditional routes, but actually, there's so much more out there. There is so much more. And the way we're going to show you that is through these success stories. These people who have really chosen to follow paths that are not well trodden, especially by our community paths, and especially difficult paths that take a long time. They're not always vocational, they're not always following degrees, they're etc. The whole point is to broaden our horizons because I think especially our people, I call it that, we are incredibly adaptable people. We are very hardworking. We are good people. We can do so much, we can achieve so much. And all it has to all we have to do is foster that environment. So this coming together, you guys looking to these people you guys having a relationship, conversation with these people, with yourselves. You're creating that wider network, that support network, that sort of wider brainstorming of what we can and can't do. We can achieve anything. This is what this is all about. So, in the first instance, I also will talk to you guys. So anyway, my name's Christiana, I'm sorry, I forgot to say that at the beginning. But I am a lawyer. I won't actually be one of the speakers today. I'm only doing the introductions and I'll be sort of uh, helping you guys with the questions and the Um But I am, of course, available to talk to anyone if they do want to talk about the law. We are going to do another series of talks with just people who are interested in law because that is a big interest I think in um, But moving forward, we do have Thaluli, who I can't even call you anything but Thaluli because <laughs> I've grown up with you as an especially age for women. So we've done this in collaboration with Express, and if you don't know Express, it's a wonderful organization that has helped countless people in our community with various issues from immigration to, I don't know, to education, to finally putting people in touch with the right people, etc. The whole point of us getting involved with Express was to try and galvanize young people that do belong part of the program to come to a lot of these events to have an interaction with people like us. So then we going to say a few words, and she's done it a million and one times at a million and one events, um, just about what stress is about, and you know, for those people who don't know it, and yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, Christiana, and thank you so much to everyone that made it possible. I think we started this journey many years ago, and Shpesa is just about celebrating the 20th anniversary this year. And when we started, there, is, there were no role models. Like, you are really lucky because you have role models that can share with you how they made it, whereas for us, it was very difficult. You couldn't find any Albanians that wanted to share everything. You couldn't find any Albanian that had made it to a successful point. And it was just, you know, error, just doing many, many errors and helping each other to find our points. So today it's about continuing that legacy, but in a better way, in a much more professional way. As the Albanians, we are really adaptable. We are individually, we work really, really well. Our problem as a community is getting together and helping each other 
with no interest. And very often we you know, use different languages for people that are successful. And we want to change that. We want the second generation of successful people to have a platform where they communicate with new arrivals, with new young people that are you know, following their dreams and maybe they need just someone to help. So I'm not going to talk about Spresso's story tonight. I'm just gonna enjoy the evening. I'm gonna you know, enjoy the talks of the really successful people. And I would like to urge continue. Everyone is, it has a journey that if it's shared with somebody else, it could help. So hi everybody. I will welcome Pushing Daddy and Ashley and Jishub Darito. As my birthday, I can see for him part to me, I mean, my community and Jishub Darito and I told the city I'm not here for part for me. Say my first time with a full Albanian community. I actually feel quite privileged and overwhelmed. Thank you very much, guys, for inviting me. And thank you for choosing the University of East London to host your event. I was really touched by your words and also by Mena Kula Tepimilians' words as well. In, in the, the key I wanted to elaborate on, she basically said about the fact that actually we all have a story and what the definition of success is, it might not necessarily be having a doctorate or a professional business, success is measured in many different ways. And I'll tell you a bit about, without giving you a full lecture in psychology, as you can see, that's my area of passion. But I want you to all know that you are all successful in your own way, whatever journey you've made until this point, I'm sure if you reflect on that journey, you can actually find points of success and things that you must stop and celebrate. Because human nature, we tend to just, um, you know, take for granted and, and actually not think about the stories and the successes and, and the milestones that we achieve in our own way. So I guess just remember that we all have a different baseline and we must measure our success based on where we start. So that's the kind of key take home message that I'd like you to have before I go on to this. I had no idea what I was going to do with my life, but all I knew was I was just really happy to be here. I mean, the youngsters of today, they grow up wanting to be famous, singers, footballers, what have you. My dream was to leave Albania. Let's not go there and talk about why that might have been my dream. But in a sense, my dream came true. And I was really, really hopeful. So I was lucky, I guess, that very quickly I picked up English. I did my GCSEs here. Um, I went to sixth form. I was going to be a doctor. That was my thing because, of course, my parents told me that was the thing to be. And I took psychology as a side subject and I just grew fascinated. The more I learned about this topic, the more I wanted to learn. So psychology, for me, wasn't a topic that I had to study to pass an exam. It was something I just needed to know and learn more about. So it became a thing that every spare moment, I just wanted to be getting into it more and more and more and it was so clear to me that whilst it's really important to save lives and become a doctor because that was the thing for my father's daughter to be the person who works in a hospital for me it was the fascination of understanding what is it that drives us humans to be who we are why is it that some people are caring loving and supportive while others are quite the opposite that really fascinated me and to this day i continue to pursue the journey of the psychological sciences and understand more and more of human nature. So what I did was I did my degree at University of Westminster. I uh, went on and I did a postgraduate certificate of teaching higher education. Um, I did that because whilst I, I, I knew, I knew from the moment that I engaged with psychology that I wanted to be a psychologist, then I quickly decided that the route for me was going to be clinical psychology because clinical psychology will help you help people who are suffering from mental distress and you can guide them to successfully recover, at least lead a, as much of a normal life as they possibly can. So it seemed like a really interesting career path. But then I got to university and I thought to myself, wow. I was utterly inspired by my lecturers. The person standing in front of me as I was sitting where you are. And what that person did for me was change my life. In that they helped me believe in myself. When I went to university, I will be perfectly honest, I was, I wanted to think, a hopeful and an optimistic person. But actually, 
I had zero percent belief that I was going to succeed. As we said earlier, I had nobody who'd been to university. I didn't know what it meant to study for a degree. But I thought, you know, I'm so interested in this topic, I'm going to try. And at least I know that I've tried, but I had no hope of succeeding. But the lecturers who stood in front of me, the lecturers who marked my work, and the lecturers who gave me feedback, they gave me hope that not only will I be successful, but I can even get a first degree. Can you imagine that? Me, a first degree. I was like, no, 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 this is not going to happen. And then as the time went on, I, I uh, became really fascinated with depression and schizophrenia. I picked that up for my third year project. And I continued to think that actually, what I want to do is be that person that even if it means I help to inspire one young person sitting in front of me, then I would have achieved a lot. So I wanted to be a lecturer because I wanted my students to realise what my lecturers helped me realise. I wanted them to know that they can, they will, and they will absolutely be who and what they want to be. Because that is the level of education that I was sort of exposed to. And I wanted to be that post the person that exposed others to it. And that's how I went into the, my whole journey of becoming a university lecturer. And I guess my passion for education has come through in different channels and it led to me then getting the director of education experience here at the University of East London so that I can continue to develop other colleagues in the path of what it is to deliver a good education to make sure that students receive a, a, a high level of education. And on that note, if you don't mind, Lerith, I'm going to invite you up just to say hi to everybody. Hi. This is one of our wonderful students who has come from Albania to study a master's degree. So she's already got a degree from Albania, but she's come here at the University of East London to convert to psychology because she too has realised what a fascinating and an absolutely amazing topic psychology is. Don't laugh, it really is. <laughs> and, and, and so, while psychology is interesting, University of East London, um, you know, has its reputation for opening doors to non-traditional students since 1898. So, as a university, you couldn't be in better hands. As to why psychology, well, we are a really high-achieving school. We have the British Psychological Society stamp of quality for the service that we deliver. The facilities are quite extraordinary in terms of what's available to you, what you can do for the research and the gathering. And then once you graduate, you can go on and, and, and stay with us to do any of the postgraduate studies. So forgive me, I'm rushing through these. As, uh, I'm sure you're eager to learn about other colleagues' paths. Uh, but in terms of your future, your career, I just want to say that it's very much on your hands and really that the key take home message as well as what I said earlier about the success and, and remembering your baseline where you started from is thinking about that nothing is impossible. Hey, when I was 15 and it was quite hard same as my colleague before me I didn't speak any English and I came straight to year 11 it was quite hard I had GCSEs at the end of the year. My Albanian parents, like everyone else, they were like, you need to get a degree. For me to get a degree, I had to get good GCSEs so I could go to sixth form. I was studying day and night just to get the grades. I managed to get to sixth form. I was studying my, and, and since I was a kid, I always was like, I'm, I was keen that I had to be a businessman. I had to, own, to have my own business and to be that I did to be a leader to, to make a change in the com community. I and from from the I managed to go to the uni. I started uni for I started uni at Coventry University in Birmingham and then um, I saw, um, I went to the uni since day one I, I had I, I started telling them about my business career what I want to do what I aspire to do and and my teachers were like, everything is possible. My English wasn't good at the time, even with my improvements. And I was then, and I was speaking with teachers, and they were aspiring me to be someone in life. And as as it was going, as my my uni life was going on, I was I was it wasn't something that I, I liked I liked it to do. So I was a dropout. I dropped from uni to start my own business. 
And then uh, while I was at uni, I made good friends. I made sure I, I networked with people. And then I started my business in, 2000, in 2019. I, before, uh, one week before the pandemic, I sat down with a business partner. I started, we were like, we put all the investments in and then we thought, you know, let's, let's, get, let's make this working. One week later, Boris, like everyone knows, the pandemic made an impact in everyone's life. And then here we go, it was lockdown after I had put all the money that I had. And then I, I wanted, to, I was like, what do I do now? There is a pandemic. I left my job. I had quit in uni. It was, a, it was a struggle. I was, what should I do? Thinking at the time, thinking outside the box. And then I thought, okay, you know, I can make this work if I give up now. What, what's all this on me that I tried? And then I thought, and then I made myself up. I started after, I, I thought, let me go and volunteer for the community first. I started work, volunteering for about a month. And after all that, I said, look, the, the thing is getting better. Let's, let's get out there. And then I managed to, to do my first, I did my first van. And then once, once we did, once we did the first one, and then I was working there every day with my friend. Sorry, guys, I'm a bit emotional. It's the it's the first time I'm speaking in front of my friend. And, and it's something, it's something very good. This is genuinely what I love to do. I love to inspire Albanians to make a change, to make, to make our name stand out because I know that we can and we should not give up. And then. Once it came May, end of May, I thought, let's go out. We went there, start, started working day and night, hard work. And then we did not stop. We, for, for one year, I did not do a single day off, not even on the Christmas day. Christmas day, I was doing research just to get more. After eight months at work, we opened our second unit. And then three months into the work, we opened our third one, fourth one, and then at the end of this week, we are opening our first shop. A message, a message that I can tell you guys is that I'm, I'm quite keen. There is nothing that is impossible as long as we put the work, we work towards it, and we, we just don't give up. If you give up, that's the end of it. Just keep working. That's another question. Sorry, mind me about uh, for interrupting you. Uh, firstly, I want to congratulate you for your business and hope you're going to succeed in the future for more and more, open more branches and everything else. Uh, my question is, I want to give a try or make chips. That is, <laughs> <laughs> I want to know the location of that. Okay, so uh, the closest one from here is in Beckton Gallions Reach. Then we have one in Ilford, one in Edmonton. We will have one in Ramford soon, and we are going to have the shop in Old Street. If I search up on Google, now, can I find it? Sorry. If I search up. Yeah, if you if you search on Google, if you search on Google, they will come up, or you can just check Naked Chips on Instagram, and then all the locations. And if you have any questions, right, it will come up thanks. here. Thank you. I'll I'll I'll. I'll, hopefully, I will be there when you come. <laughs> I'll uh, mention your name actually. <laughs> thanks. Uh, and then, so we have been going for a year, for about a year and a half, close to two years, and there, there is, he's been doing okay. Now we have an aspiration to have native chips all over London, and then as well as that, we want to open our first shops in Birmingham and Manchester. Uh, we, while we were doing this, we noticed that there is a gap in the market about the supply of potatoes, and we are building the biggest factory for uh, producing potatoes inside M25 in London and the third one in the country. We are gonna have employed over 20 people as well as 18 people we currently hire at Naked Chips. And I can't say anything but that you are wonderful. You're Thank you very much. <laughs> you're, very, you're much too kind. Good evening everybody. Thank you to the organizers for inviting me. I am Dr. Gary Smiley. L for my friends and my close family members, unless I'm in trouble with my mother and it's full name and surname. <laughs> and I promise you that doesn't get better even at this age. <laughs> so, what am I? I'm a doctor. I'm a general surgeon with a special interest in oncology surgery. So 
So that's my side of uh, things. I'm also a medical lecturer and a medical examiner as well. And in October this year, I shall start my oncology PhD because um, I like academia and I like, um, well, as, I, as, as you said, you're quite passionate about oncology. Um, I lost a grandmother to uh, cancer, so it's very much a personal vendetta now. So I will talk about my kind of my pathway to become a doctor, become a surgeon. I will talk a little bit about pros and cons of study medicine. Um, and I'm very happy to have any questions if you have any for me. So as my previous one, my call me colleagues said, I moved to this country aged 10 with my parents and my younger sister. Um, also in speaking word of Albanian, and we started from scratch. Um, I was age 16 doing my GCSE and we had mentors and I quote, he was very, very good and he said, um, you have an affinity for languages, medicine is very difficult to get, in, get involved with and get into university, don't go for medicine, do language. What did I do? I went for medicine at Oxford, thank you very much. Um, <laughs> Um, I did my GCSEs, I did my A-levels, um, got into university, did six years of um, undergraduate degree at Oxford and the Barts for my practical side. Then I started my medical degree as a foundation doctor, first year and second year. Then after the second year, you all apply for a speciality. 80-90% of doctors become GPs, it's a better quality of life. The 10% of us that are a bit more stubborn, I think going to do either medicine or, or, or surgery and I we differentiate between the two because um, yeah surgeons are, are not very much liked in the hospital and we have, we have an ego problem so they say um, so general surgery why I um, I like to get involved and do things I like to physically touch things I think um, and as cliche as it sounds treat people help people and surgery is one way we can go in and actually make a difference. Now, pros and cons. I'll start with cons. Six years of undergraduate teaching and um, undergraduate uh, training, when all your friends are going out, partying and graduating after third year, you're still studying, not very nice. You're still very poor, not very nice at all, because you're still a student. Um, some of my closest friends had to check in with me six weeks in advance to make any plans because we work really long hours. Um, there are times where I do 14, 15 hour shifts. Mid-surgery, whilst you operate on somebody, you can't say, sorry, time's up, out I'm going, I've got plans for the evening. You miss birthday, you miss, you miss weddings, you miss time with family, the most important things. Um, and it's hard, it's, it's, it, it can be hard. There are days where I've been referred to some of these guys being been a, bit, been a bit emotional about what's happened in the hospital. You see death, you touch death, you see sickness, you touch sickness. And that can be hard for a person sometimes. But there are good things to it. There are very, very good things to it. It's that satisfaction of saving people. You know, that satisfaction of somebody grabbing by the hand and saying, don't let me die, I have a child at home. Or the, your patient who's 33 years old comes back and says, thank you so much for giving me more time with my twins or somebody coming back and saying thank you for saving my mother. That, that is uncomparable to all the bad and cons that you consider with regards to medicine. But there are, you know, you, you gain skills which are so sought after. You can work anywhere in the world if you graduate from any medical universities um, in the UK. So I don't know if anyone of you wish to pursue medicine. I would be more than happy to talk to people about it, if anyone has any questions from me about it at all. Uh, yeah, I have a question. Yes. Yes. Thank you very much. Uh, did you ever face any situation where you have succeeded about that? And then you felt from inside that you said you that uh, I feel proud for choosing to be a doctor and never regret about that. And you also felt joy inside yourself. And the moment where I feel joy inside myself. Yeah, did you ever face any situation feeling proud inside yourself for choosing to be a doctor? <laughs> um, there are times because every time you face different situations as you mentioned there's someone uh, begging to, to leave for more 
and you have also mentioned you touched the health of there is someone that says thank you very much for uh, saving my child and all this kind of stuff yeah. so there is bad a uh, good situation so there is also better situations instead of good ones yeah yeah those those are the you're completely right those are the days that keep you going um medicine's not you don't go to medicine to make money it's, it's not a business it's not something that you can you can get a lot of money from you go to medicine for satisfaction and for what you do for the community what you do for people um, yes, Everyone's been talking about business and uh, medicine and everything. Then it's been talking about marketing, but it's very tough. <laughs> I mean, my brother, who's sitting right here today, and my mum, we still don't understand what marketing is, mm -hmm. what I do uh, for a living. But yeah, um, I'll get you through slightly, slightly different, but I'll get you through what I've been doing and a few tips of how I think. Um, you could do them as well, and um, then we can go through Q&A at the end. Right, so there is this uh, network of people, and as Yassi mentioned earlier, if you haven't got that, you're probably not going to get anywhere. So if you haven't got a network, just go and do that from today. And you'll see the same picture after about two slides with some sort of titles of different people. And that will make more sense, but basically just see yourself as someone in the middle, or if you're not right there right now, in about the next three, four years, you need to be that person in the middle and have all that net of people around you. <clears throat> right, so my journey in the UK, I wasn't born here and I didn't move here when I was 13 or 15, like some of you. I moved in 2013 when I was only 20. I wanted to be a football player. That didn't happen, so then I went through one year of uh, studying English in uh, Walthamstow, actually, in Walton Forest, so not far from here. And then I moved to, um, to Leighton. And then in 2014, I moved to Sydney Nizden College. Uh, obviously, my English was good because uh, obviously I had all the Italian friends, and they all they wanted me to do is to um, study foreign languages, be great at uh, school, and become either a doctor, a lawyer, or someone fine. I didn't do anything. <laughs> um, <laughs> then, so 2014, my English, I wasn't fully confident, uh, although obviously, as, as people from the Balkans or as Albanians, we are very confident. And I run to become the president of student unions at Sydney and Islam College, which is in North London. And uh, I was one of the people elected. Uh, there was another Daniel that you know very well, who was the further education. I was looking after the sort of higher education students within college environment. So we were shouting about them. We were shouting about uh, uh, international students' rights, which in 2014 it has only just been reinstated. But in 2014, Theresa May. Um, removed the right to work after you finish your degree. So you had about two months to find a job and stay, or you had to go back. So now that has been reinstated, which was on a campaign that uh, with you know, National University students, we, we pushed quite a lot. Um, so from being the student president, I was, um, I eventually got onto the board of governors of the college, which is the whole point of the talks today, basically being associated, if you think about that net earlier with more higher profile people, people, other professionals who would potentially help you to get to the next level. So my first question in the in the boardroom, they said to me, oh, where are you from? I said, oh, I'm Albanian. And there is this guy who we still, we're friends, obviously a lot older than me, and he said, oh, do you speak Greek? And I was like, oh, what's the question? <laughs> yeah. I, said to him, I said to him, do they speak Albanian in Greece? That was my immediate reaction. You know, when, you, when I think about it nine years later, I'm like, okay, that was just my, you know, my <laughs> instinct. Um, um, so yeah, the same year after sort of settling in the board, I also got involved in the International Students Campaign. And in 2016, for anyone who has ever been involved in student unions, we've got like an annual annual, camp annual um, conference. We all come from different parts of the UK. We go as delegates. Whoever wants to run for positions, we get elected basically. So from Oxford and Cambridge down to anywhere else. So I was one of the 15 people that was uh, that won the elections to be in the National Exec Council, which was obviously quite a proud moment because uh, we managed to convince the college that what we were doing was actually um, sort of changing lives and creating opportunities and empowering people. And it was being ranked nationally. In the same year, uh, quite lucky with that, I was on, uh, when Albania got on um, uh, Euro 2016 for the first time, I was the guy on the promotional video. So that video went crazy and that's hence Instagram and the rest of it. Um, so obviously I, being in marketing, I used it for every single thing possible to position myself, differentiate from other people, etc, etc. In the same year, I was awarded International Student Officer of the Year, but when I look back at these awards now, they're so exciting. But back then, they did mean a lot for me. 
because uh, I mean it was only like three years after I moved to this country. And uh, 2018, then after um, completing a year in Albania working for a company, because I thought there's no point having a degree, you can't get a job. I'm going to go and get some experience, then go back and potentially have more chances to get a working visa, which I wanted to. So through someone from 2015 Board of Governors, he part of that network. He said, okay, I know you've had some experience in finance. Uh, I think you'll be good for this role. So I interned for this company in the city. So I was going from a bar job wearing, you know, what you wear in a bar job to this um, city life of wearing a, a tie and shirt and everything. And it felt really, really crazy. For like three months after that, I, I sort of finished the bar job and just carried on with, with the other job. Um, so in the same year, I graduated from University of West London and I got a working visa with a company up in the Midlands where I live and work at the minute. And in 2020, after doing some what looks like pretty good work nowadays, uh, I was awarded Young Professional of the Year in the East Midlands and Future Face Finance and Sales and Marketing on the other side of the Midlands, so Birmingham area. Um, so that further validated that what we're actually doing is making a difference. Because sometimes as young people, we go into a job, uh, we do whatever we do nine to five beyond that uh, over the weekend sometimes, and, but we don't realize that we are actually making a difference. And we are, um, you know, uh, whether it's uh, bringing up a company or doing some community work and, and, and empowering other young, younger people or whatever age they are to, 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 to go the next step.